How can blockchain help you to get more credit and funding for your research? Well, that's just one of the questions being asked at SEED 2019, which is in fact taking place for the first time in Davos this week. And the new event is all about connecting the dots between blockchain and science. Joining me here in the studio today is actually Alexandra Sokowowska, who helped bring this event to life. Just to kick things off, not everyone comes from the world of academia or is currently in the process of writing a research paper. So maybe if you could give us a better idea and tell us a story or an anecdote mm -hmm. that illustrates one of the pains when it comes to scientific research. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think every single person um, that's watching this program will have a very romantic vision of what scientist actually does. We tend to think about uh, solving really important problems and uh, making amazing discoveries. But actually, once you get to that point and you, for example, start your PhD program, you start to learn a lot about how much um, politics and um, reputation is uh, really a part of it in order to be able to get a permanent position in the future. So when you start, you'll probably find out that in order to get a position or get a chance, you need to have some certain key performance indicators such as, as many, you have to publish as many papers as possible, get as many citations uh, as possible, and it becomes a little bit less of a child play for you mm -hmm. uh, once you're in, in that system. So what you're saying is that it gets quite competitive, I guess. And, Extremely, yes. And you're only painting one side of the picture. What are some other uh, challenges that you face that you think that blockchain could actually come and help in that instance? I think one big issue that we have in, uh, in the system right now is that there is a legacy way of dealing with scholarly communication. So nowadays we still have to write 10, 20, 30 pages of text uh, to describe our research project. And uh, oftentimes, because we've done so much progress over the years in science, now science has to be done collaboratively, much more collaboratively than has been done in the previous years. And keeping that uh, way of scholarly communication, which is a paper, and that paper has a long list of authors, mm -hmm. but usually only the first author gets the credit. Keeping that is not really very fair to everyone who contributes it. Therefore, having a new system, a new way of publishing that can have blockchain at, the, at its core, that will secure actually that we know who gets credit for what, that would be fantastic. And there are some prototypes already out there that can secure this. And I think the community would uh, benefit from it immensely. And that's what we're going to dig into. But let's be clear, the scientific mm -hmm. community, that includes everyone under the umbrella of researchers, librarians, uh, publishers. organizations, publishers as well, yes, absolutely. So to give our audience a better idea, I thought I would pull up a video and that's by Science Matters. They're an online science publication actually based here in Zurich, Switzerland. And they can kind of illustrate these mm -hmm. points better for us. So let's take a look over here. We need to not only describe how we exactly arrive at a conclusion of what the data are, but we also need to have a direct view of how our colleagues see what we do and how they assess it. Single observations and individual insights are just as important as group studies and the traditional journal article. We found thousands of single observations and we don't know what to do with that. So actually the idea of having a journal that could give you the possibility to put them out would be a great chance to uh, kind of also build like uh, the Lego of science. Blockchain technology has the capacity to make science more open and transparent. Science Matters will use this technology to make the reviewing process as well as the publishing process efficient and trustworthy. In an open access environment, the barrier of cost is removed because anyone, anywhere in the world with an internet connection, can access all the outputs that a university, and research performing organization is producing. So Alexandra, what we heard there was a point that you raised earlier that if there is a paper and you've got three people writing, for example, usually the person at the very beginning takes the credit as the primary author. And in the video that we just saw, they're saying that single observations or someone who's contributing to only a certain part mm -hmm. should still deserve that much credit. So how could blockchain change that? 
So having um, a, a whole research project that is uh, parted into, for example, somebody who is doing the experiment, right? And then and the second part, somebody who does the data analysis. And then the last part, that could be interpretation. Like these three things can be done by three completely different people. If we take um, blockchain, so this technology, we can actually put onto blockchain hash the first part that mm -hmm. would be data collection. Uh, in the future, we could have ex uh, lab uh, equipment such as microscopes, telescopes, which can actually be uh, transmitting maybe even to the network directly who and when exactly did mm -hmm. an experiment. So imagine now we could have two labs that at the same time uh, did the same experiment or maybe like a little bit off in time. One did an hour earlier than the other one an hour later. Who gets the credit? Mm. I mean, then this would unequivocally uh, solve the issue and solve the dispute who was the author. Um, so in yeah. Switzerland, we're already seeing some solutions come out um, as a way of time stamping the data so everyone knows exactly who did what at mm -hmm. what point in time. Yes. But these are still these solutions are still in their infancy. So I guess the question to you is why are we still uh, lagging behind in terms of seeing real adoption across all Swiss universities, for example? It's a very good question. So it, in order to answer this, we have to review how this entire ecosystem actually works and what it rests upon. So nowadays it rests upon this entire reputation structure. Reputation is extremely important in science. It's got to the point that because it's so competitive, it sometimes is you know, even more important to researchers or who, whoever in that system than the science itself. And um, when we think about this ecosystem, we have different stakeholders. So we mentioned them already earlier, right? So funding organizations. Funding organizations will disseminate research uh, money to, um, to a given group, to a given team leader, based on the output of uh, that person's research. So we need to write a proposal, we need to describe something that is going to be uh, important, of course, but also hot in the, in the sense of uh, really being uh, in the goals of a given organization. And then you'll have to prove that you have uh, done really a great work and a lot of work. What you do is put the list of the papers. And the more you papers you have, the better. The more citations, which means the more other scientists cite you in their papers, reference you, the better. And then based on this, you can get money. So this is one interaction with one stakeholder. Then we have, so you know already... It seems like yeah. a process with a lot of hurdles. Absolutely, so, yeah. so who is showing resistance to, I guess, uh, wanting to have this decentralised database of information, of having all scientific research on the blockchain? I think the first very important hurdle is scientists themselves. I mean, for one thing that we need to understand also is these are very young uh, projects. So it takes a lot of time to, uh, to really start using it. The user base is going to grow slowly. Only and only when scientists are going to actually identify that this is something that they want to use and that it's really helpful. If this new system doesn't have a reputation yet in the entire ecosystem, so among the granting institutions, among um, the hiring committees, uh, etc. If this is not the case or other researchers also will not really accept it, it won't work. But if they're going to get work. benefits out of it, why would they be hesitant about using blockchain? So the benefits of this, these systems, right, to use them, it's based on the reputation. So if I th feel that I can submit my paper to nature, everybody mm. agrees, society agrees, it's kind of like a social uh, media effect. Like if everybody likes it and everybody agrees it's really great to do, why would I choose a journal that is you know, not really known yet so well? If I know that in the community that is going, granting me jobs in the future, which fulfills my basic needs of having income, right, okay. and doing what I love, if I know they will respect more journal nature, not the new one, why would I do it? So it's about self-interest. So finding an incentive, the right uh, way for people to understand why they should use that system. Alexandra, I'm going to put you on the spot here because yeah. you do come from the world of academia, and I guess you could understand if someone were to put their paper on the blockchain but then realise they had submitted something that was confidential or they wanted to rectify a mistake that they had made. What would happen in that case then? I mean, this is amazing and this is what could help. And this is one of the great uh, benefits that come from such systems is that you open it for scrutiny. So if I, you don't really put uh, the, the paper itself on blockchain, right? It's just some form, some hash, some mathematical function that uh, proves that exactly that kind of a document or picture or a code, piece of code, whatever, has been added to the system. The most important application of blockchain for scientific publishing is disintermediating it. So right now we have publishers that are in the middle between the libraries, universities and researchers. Mm -hmm. And um, they are making insane profits. About the biggest ones are making $2 billion profit a year 
on the taxpayers' money. What we could do is we can imagine having a completely new system, a decentralized system, governed system with multiple universities governing it and make, curating the content. So in a nutshell, could you just walk me through the current funding models for researchers and how blockchain could be implemented in that scenario? So current uh, funding model is very traditional. So the researchers have to write uh, proposals. And then based on these proposals, the funding organization might give the money or, uh, to the researcher or not. Um, there are many other ways that blockchain can actually enable researchers to collect money. For example, in some disciplines, 98 or more percent of the research data is being discarded and other researchers could, be, could have been using them and to reduce the redundancy in, in experiments. So we could create a marketplace for such data. Researchers could be trading and uh, in that way maybe earning more money for some research outputs. So there are some other ideas of tokenizing research uh, projects. This is something that it's uh, very abstract at the moment. I've but heard it, real estate and I've heard yeah. art, but not research papers yet on the show. Yeah, so we, can, we could imagine that some uh, research output can be really doing very well and you could give shares to that. And as it's uh, growing and growing in its reputation, it, its price can be going up. It's very futuristic, but uh, this could be another way of doing that. Or crowdsourcing, uh, doing an ICO for a research project, something like this, instead of doing it for a Lamborghini, uh, could be a better use of uh, people's money. But I guess another upside of that is that when you get tokens, it could also incentivize people to do better peer review. Absolutely, yeah. So this is uh, definitely another way of uh, giving back to the, the research community to make money on doing a decent and good peer review. I think that's a very good application as well. Switzerland has already seen multiple or proliferation, I guess, of blockchain-related ev events. And at this time, you've decided to, I guess, spearhead Seed 2019, which is an event dedicated to the intersection between blockchain and science. Right. So I guess, why are you only doing this just now? Um, blockchain is very new <laughs> in a way, right? So uh, if every, it's everybody... It's new, but it's still been around for a few years. And in yes. Switzerland, many other industries have jumped onto that earlier Absolutely, than yeah. academia. But everything that happens in academia is happening usually much uh, slower than it is happening in the uh, tech world, with tech, tech startups. It's also about the matter of risks. Like people are taking risks in the tech startups, right? Somebody can just come and for a great pitch, throw a couple of million because they believe in a project. That does not happen very often in academia. But so to answer your question why we do this now, it's we are a startup. We're an ETH Zurich spin-off. Um, it's, it's quite an investment, it's a social project and it's not uh, immediately bringing in uh, revenues. Have you spoken to the uh, Switzerland's National Science Foundation to get their take on how the industry can move ahead faster and not be just playing the catch-up game all the time? So we will definitely be putting all these elements and the uh, opinions of everybody uh, on, on, we'll put it on the table and try to together develop a new system that benefits everybody. But it's, yeah, it's, it has to be done collaboratively. There's just too many strings attached to too many stakeholders to, you know, to pick one and then build it and hope that all these intertwined people are going to want to use it. No, we need to do it in a user-oriented way and ask everybody, what do you want to use? What do you think will make sense? Just to finish up, do you see a future where all scientific journals will be living on the blockchain? And if so, what would that look like? I would like to see a future where there is one uh, decentralized database of research outputs that is not owned by anybody, no intermediary, but it's actually maintained and managed by universities. That a world where um, all the outputs are not hidden behind paywalls, that everybody, because it's a common good, it's a norm in science, communality of research outputs. I would like to see a world where this is actually from the public money, ensured that everybody has access to it. And I think people can do it. It's going to be a long way but it, it's possible it absolutely has only benefits. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Thank you very much.